Hello everyone, welcome to Malleus Gaming. I'm your host Malleus, and in today's episode of Total Tactics, we're going to be discussing the legendary Alexander the Great, and delving into some of the real-life tactics he utilized in his conquest of the ancient world. These include the classic hammer and anvil, the cunning hidden flank, and the daring false gap. I'll be displaying these maneuvers as the three elven factions, but they can be used by pretty much any of the various factions in Total War Warhammer 3. Now if you enjoy this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and turn on notifications, as it will really help out the channel. And with that, it's time to conquer the Warhammer world. Alexander III, more famously known as Alexander the Great, was an ancient Greek king of Macedon, and lived from 356 BC to 323 BC. He inherited his kingdom from his father Philip II at the age of 20. Philip had left his son with a disciplined, highly trained army, and had revolutionized traditional phalanx warfare with the introduction of the Sarissa Pike, and heavily incorporated cavalry as decisive elite troops in battle. Alexander would use this army to unite the disparate Greek city-states under his banner before undergoing a massive military campaign, conquering most of the known world. His Macedonian Greek Empire would expand to encompass regions such as Persia, Egypt, Mesopotamia, Parthia, and even encroach upon the borders of India. Alexander fought and won many battles, one of the more famous being the Battle of Gogamela. He utilized the three different tactics I'll be discussing at this battle, through which he broke the strength of the Persian Emperor Darius III, and ultimately claimed ownership of the Achaemenid Persian Empire. The candle of Alexander's life burned fiercely, but quickly, and the young emperor would pass away at the age of 32, his massive empire splintering with his absence, but his legend enduring still to this day. One of, if not the most, famous of Alexander the Great's tactics, the hammer and anvil is very likely familiar to any player of the Total War games. To put it simply, the hammer and anvil involves pinning the enemy battle line in place with your own infantry units before charging in some heavy shock cavalry into the rear of the line. This has stood the test of time as being one of the most effective uses of heavy cavalry, as it not only allows them to cause devastating damage with their charge, but also inflicts an incredible morale hit to the enemy troops. Should the enemy be brave enough to stay fighting, it is easy enough to disengage your cavalry before wheeling them back and charging in again until the enemy finally breaks. Alexander would hold the line with his pike phalanxes before charging in with his companion cavalry to rout his foes. You can see the equivalent in action on screen, with my Wood Elf Eternal Guard holding the line, archers behind loosing volleys to draw in the orcs. Once the lines have met, my great stag knights ride out from cover and charge into the rear of the orcs, quickly breaking their morale and shattering their numbers. You don't have to limit yourself to just using cavalry as a hammer though, as shock infantry such as these blade singers can also serve well in this role. Any great weapon armed unit such as bestigors, hammerers, or plague sensor bearers, or any monstrous infantry would perform wonderfully if you keep them in reserve to charge into the enemy's flanks. Speaking of flanks, let's take a look at another cunning tactic. Often we find ourselves placing our cavalry units on the wings of our formations in order to counter our opponent's own flanking units. However, there have been times where I found that my cavalry were vastly overmatched, either through being outnumbered and outmaneuvered, or by just being physically inferior to the enemy's elite cavalry. The hidden flank is a ploy that can be utilized to help turn the tide in situations such as these. In the previously mentioned Battle of Gogamela, Alexander would lead his companion cavalry to the far right flank of the Macedonian line. The Persian Emperor Darius would attempt to counter this by sending a sizable portion of his own cavalry after the Greeks. 
However, the Persians did not know that Alexander had contingents of his infantry following along, hidden from view, and ready to provide support. In the 2004 film Alexander, this was demonstrated with the infantry being hidden behind plumes of dust kicked up by the horses. Once the Greek and Persian cavalry engaged each other, Alexander's supporting infantry were able to charge in and give the Greeks an edge in the battle. In my example on screen, I've used stalking shades with great weapons to support my Dread Knights. The shades are able to stealthily advance with the knights and can serve in multiple different roles. They can charge in alongside the cavalry, hoping to provide a combat edge and overwhelm the foe. Alternatively, they can be used to hold the enemy up, allowing your cavalry to disengage and then charge back in. Finally, they could just be used to provide a flanking missile fire unit in order to tip the scales. Having stealth is quite important for this role, particularly if you wanted to try it against a human opponent. I've found shades with great weapons to be particularly good due to their versatility, but other units like Eshin Triads with Rat Ogres or Chameleon Skinks with Horned Ones would be effective as well. So, the flanks are ours. But now what? The False Gap can be a difficult maneuver to pull off, and its use by Alexander was a testament to his skills as both a commander and a warrior. At the Battle of Gogamela, there were two ways in which it was utilized by the Greeks. The first form was by the Phalanx Infantry. When confronted by onrushing Persian chariots, the Macedonians spread apart within their ranks. This opened up channels through which the chariots rode through, unable to properly strike the Macedonian fighters. The chariots were then, in turn, attacked by veteran Greek troops and destroyed. The second false gap maneuver was done by Alexander and his companion cavalry, who along with their supporting hidden flank infantry, were fighting against the Persian cavalry. With the Persian chariots neutralized, and Darius's elite immortal infantry regiments fighting against the Macedonian phalanxes, Alexander was able to disengage with his own cavalry and charge through the gap left by the Persian infantry. This was his ultimate plan to let the Persians believe he was too committed to the far flank and open up their vulnerable rear lines to a surprise cavalry charge. It was this attack that led to Darius fleeing the battlefield, followed by the rest of his army routing in defeat. I've demonstrated these two methods with the High Elves here. My spear lines space themselves apart with a larger gap in the middle as the orcs approach. The orcs either charge my lines or move a unit through the gap. Either way, this leaves a perfect opportunity for my Swordmasters in reserve to charge in and start carving up the enemy units. As for the cavalry, I was able to disengage my Dragon Princes, leaving Tyrion to hold up the Boar Riders, and charge in against the Orc rear line, breaking their archers and opening up the way for devastating rear charges against the remaining Greenskins. Ideally, you'd have some hidden flankers with your cavalry to hold up the enemy and really let you take control of the field. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. It was a lot of fun covering the exploits of Alexander the Great and seeing how his tactics can still be used, even in video game form. The battles in this were purely to demonstrate the maneuvers in a more easy to read scale and I hope to showcase these individually in larger scale fights sometime in the future. If you try these out or have used similar tactics yourself, please let me know in the comments how they went for you. Also, I hope I was able to provide some justice to the tale of Alexander the Great. There is certainly so much to be said of him and it was quite the challenge to summarize such key moments. If you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and turn on your notifications to help out the channel within the warp realm of YouTube. I hope you all have a great day, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!